spy behind us? <laughs> That's a piece of pie. <laughs> oh my god. How Brazilian. I wonder, right. never mind. <laughs> Okay, I'm, I am here with the beloved and legendary Hazes. It is such a profound honor for me to speak with both of you. Thank you. Um, so I'm 38. My mother watched Days of Our Lives when I was in the womb. Yes, she did. She and, so, you been and so I have watched you two from the very, very start. I grew up, you know, with my mother running around the house. But everything would stop for Days of Our Lives. As it should. I love you. And and actually, the day of your first wedding, the Doug and Julie's first wedding in 1976, 76. my mother had a huge, huge party. Oh, All of our friends were there. Yeah, um, did she send pictures from the party? I don't think she actually sent pictures, but there were like so pictures. many of her friends were there. <laughs> Some people sent pictures. They took pictures, and they were wearing hats and the, hats. I had and a wedding the, cake. The, and everything was all on doilies, and it was very <laughs> fancy. It was a wonderful it was party. Lovely. Oh, and it was such a treat for us. And again, those are some of the best memories that I have. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm also a therapist. I'm a licensed marriage family therapist. I live in New York, and I also um, am licensed here in California. And one of the reasons why I love soaps and love doing this is because yes. I believe, I've always believed, that soap operas have the power to promote mental health, wellness, and healing. And one of the ways I think you two have always been part of that is I think as a child watching Doug and Julie survive every single obstacle that came their way, um, deaths, trauma, violence, um, their own psychological problems to be together, yeah. I think that was a very powerful message the soaps used to tell, that, that we can survive the obstacles in our lives, we can overcome adversity. Well, that used to be one of the main reasons that people tuned in was problem solving and problems that were likely to occur in their lives that grew out of their own emotional stories. Uh, when you get into stories of great fantasy, that isn't quite the way you handle it. I feel you know, the same. I mean, we have gone through periods where I remember one time where Christian was lowered into a vat of boiling oil and ignited. And that's not the sort of thing that happens every day in everyone's life. No. Uh, but loving and giving and doing and raising children and the dynamic of male-female, that's the essence to me of our kind of storytelling. Yes. Yeah. And oh, I, interesting of you to say that soaps are helpful in that way. I, I don't believe I'd ever thought that way, but it's a wonderful concept. It's a wonderful idea, it's and I think it's true. Our characters do give good advice. And? <laughs> And we have a relationship, Bill and Susan have a relationship that's very close to Doug and Julie's relationship, so it's easy for us to portray that. We wrote a book about four years ago, and much of it is about relationships. And uh, I, you put it so well, i, I, I got to rethink that. It's a, Wonderful well, idea. And again, the idea is that these people go through some of the worst things that could happen yes. to us, yes. but they never sit around and say, oh, poor me, why me, I'm going to give up. Right. You know, I remember Julie being in a coma at, a, at once when she was shot by someone. I think yes. Lee had hired someone to yes. shoot her. Oh, yes. And I just remember thinking, gosh, everything she had been through, she's fighting so hard in this coma to come back to her family, to live. Yeah. She never gives up. She just never gives up. And I think that was a powerful message the soaps would send out at that time. Also, well, as a writer, as a screenwriter, self-pity does not play very well. Mm -hmm. uh, so, as the key that you, the, the key that you're unlocking all the characters with was they soldier on. Yes, in our hard economic times, in the, all the dramatic changes that the world is going through, to sit back and and get out of the battle and say, "Oh dear me, poor me, it just isn't going to work anymore," is not what life is about. Uh, you're defeated if you allow yourself to to pity yourself. There's no drama in it. There's no fun in it. There's no life in it. And our shows are about life. So it seems to be it's yeah. very close to reality when we are working. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine what Susan had to go through a couple of years ago when the character of Doug was killed off? Was they horrible. did not tell us ahead of time that the, all those characters were coming back. It was we the didn't destruction know that. of our whole family. It was and to say goodbye to Bill, we were we were on vacation in China, and we got a telephone call from Ken Corday at our hotel in China, in Xi'an, saying, "Well, we're putting you back on the show," and I knew that something had happened to Suzanne Rogers on the show, and I said, "Is it to kill us?" 
And he said, well, yes. Just one of you. Just one of you. And it's not you. And it's not you. <laughs> oh, okay. So that was an enormous, you know, an enormous wound, which had kind of healed over by the time we got back to California and we did the shows. But it was ag it was real agony for everybody that was involved in that whole period. I can remember members of the crew bursting into tears over those deaths. Yeah, that's how deep it was. And Christian Alfonso and I have a very close relationship. It's like she's my daughter. And not only Doug's ho daughter Hope, but she's my daughter. Can you imagine her feelings saying goodbye to a yeah. father? It was so it was all, so real. It was real. So at that time, I, re I remember when Doug was, quote, killed off. Yeah. That was, as for me as a viewer, was when we started to get a little suspicious that something was fishy, that something wasn't quite right, that something was was happening. And I forgot why. It just seemed to be, with, with Doug's death, there was something that tipped off the viewers that well, I this wasn't what, exactly what it appeared to I be. I don't know what it could have been, honey, because he was lying in the coffin for several days in the Horton living room. And I figured, well, if he's been axed, if it, if it was a dummy, it sure looks real to me. Yeah. Because Bill was actually in the box. It was actually a child size, size coffin. So it was a big squeeze. <laughs> they rented that. So it was a big squeeze for him to get in there and say, are we on yet? Okay, hold your breath. Take a deep breath. Okay, still dead. <laughs> So how was, I mean, again, it seemed like for so long you had not been given very much dramatic material on the show, yet this storyline gave you a chance to do yeah, a lot Yeah, I had a lot work. to play. It was wonderful. That part, that part was wonderful. And we did have one magnificent scene, scene written for us. After Doug had died, Julie went to pray in the chapel. There, a light appeared, and Doug, as a ghost, walked out, and they Say had... Goodbye a scene to say goodbye, to say all those things that you want to say to a person who has died. Yeah. It was beautifully written and it was just so moving to, to play that. It was just like maybe a three minute scene. Oh, it was wonderful. But moving forward in time, yeah. we seem to be alive this yes, Christmas. I'm happy about that. <laughs> and we seem to have a couple of shows to do. We've, we've done the Christmas Eve show and we're recording on the third, Friday the 13th. Yes. And Bill's advised, Doug is advising Hope and Julie is running her mouth to everybody. So maybe we'll have a future together again. I hope so. How are you two different from your characters, Doug and Julie? <laughs> I don't know, because we share the same jewelry. Uh -huh. I wear my own jewelry on the show, so uh -huh. I think I'm very like her. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> How are you different from Doug? I don't know. We're awfully close. Um, he's uh, made some, uh, some decisions that uh, Bill would not have made. Yeah, Bill Hayes never went to jail. That's, we'll how that on the record. That's how you're different. That's how you're different. Bill it. never got caught. That's right. <laughs> there we go. Okay. That's a good question. Well, we're being told to wrap up, but I okay, just, it is you. a profound, profound honor to speak with both of you. Thank I admire you, you much, both. Jenny. I want to thank you both for the way you've helped me in my life without even knowing thank it. You. And the millions of others. I hope to see more of Doug and Julie in Salem real soon. So do really we. Do. Thanks. Okay. Thank, thank you. you.